one of Paul's many talents out in the compressor shed. Two degrees. Two degrees, if that. Yeah. Ten is... Tensioning belts, we're running out of air in there. One in seven. Big issues, no air. Big issues, no air. Yeah. Look at the state of you already, Paul. It's not even... It's it not felt even, bad, it's not even... It might even Monday lunchtime, is it? It's not even 11 o'clock yet. Uh, right. Moment of truth. Yeah. sound better. better sounds a bit faster i think we're going to need new belts at some point yes we need new belts right so we're over at stewart's here and isaac you can see has put the putting the engine back together how's it going mate all right yeah not too bad um just just got the manifolds on there just got to tighten them up and then so the sump's on yeah it's pr pretty much i think all that's left is getting the leads on the plugs Okay. Uh, rocker cover and water pump and this coolant pipe. So the, and the uh, carbs and everything, obviously. Apart from the smoking, the engine come in it had a slight oil leak, but we do we think it's from this thing. Is that right? Yeah. From the breather. Got, um, new rubber gaskets on there uh, instead of the cork ones. Oh, I see. So um, yeah, so they should do a better job. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Apart from that, don't seem to be any other leaks. Just got to do the check the clearances and that and it's all back yeah. together ideal let's hopefully fingers crossed does away with any smoking and oil leaks right everyone so the time has come for me to try and explain how we find out the compression ratio and we're going to be doing that on this pre-cross flow engine here so We've worked out that the compression ratio we want to end up with is 11.5 to 1, but we want to find out exactly what the compression ratio is on the engine as it stands or has been put together. So I'm going to do my best, guys. Bear with me. I'm not a teacher. Um, I do find it a little bit difficult, as to some people. You, you take what you know in here for granted, but when you try to explain it sometimes and you have to think about it, it's a little bit more difficult um, and this being a bit, of, a, a, I suppose, a bit of a complicated maths equation, um, I'm going to try and explain to you in simpleman's terms if I can. So I do hope that you understand what I'm going on about. Before we find out what the compression ratio is, before we do the calculations there, we need to find out three things. So firstly, on this engine, fortunately, the piston is flat top and it's flush with the block face. So we've got no volume there to add or take away to the overall volume um, of in the cylinder when the piston's on TDC. So the next thing we need to find out is the volume of the head gasket um, squashed and we need to find out the volume of the combustion chamber. Um, we also need to find out then the overall capacity of the engine. If you watched a couple of videos back, guys, you would have seen me work out the volume of the cylinder head. I showed you where I have to inject um, paraffin into the combustion chamber with the valves in, springs on, spark plug in, um, use the perspex at the top with the two holes. If you haven't watched that, go back and watch that video, guys. We found that out and you can see here that I've worked these are some measurements that I've took for what we've got. So, first of all, we've worked out that cylinder head is 39 cc's at the moment, okay? So we're gonna use that in a moment. We know that we've got the head gasket diameter here. We need to find the volume of that head gasket. So we've got head gasket is 84 millimeters, but we're gonna be using centimeters here. So I've converted everything into centimeters just to do the calculations. So 84 mil is 8.4 centimeters, okay? And that is the diameter of that gasket. So the cal first calculation, we need to find the area of that gasket before the volume. So the area calculation is pi, which is 3.14 we use. Well, it's 3.14159, it goes on, but we just use that. That's more than adequate. So 3.14 times radius times radius. So it's pi times radius squared to work out the area. So half of 8.4 is 4.2. So we need to times pi by 4.2, then times 4.2 again, because it's 
pi times r times r. So that gives us 55.4 basically um, centimeters squared in that area. Now we need to times that by the depth of the gasket to get the volume. Okay, so we've got a 1.2 millimeter compressed um, compressed thickness of that head gasket, which um, comprises to 0.12 centimeters. Okay, so we're going from millimeters to centimeters. So we times that by 0 0.12, 0 0.12. And that gives us the volume of that gasket is 6.65 centimetres cubed. Okay, so that is the area that we need to add on to that 39 of the head. 39, sorry, plus 6.65 equals 45.65. So that is the area or the volume there in centimetres cubed. When the piston is on TDTC, that is the volume in that engine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find out the capacity of this engine. Okay. So what I sometimes do is, to be honest, I use the Burton catalogue. So this is just the Burton catalogue, an old one. And in the front of the Burton catalogue, they give you lots of formulas and what have you. It's really, really helpful. So I think we'll use this one just so it makes it a bit easier for you, for, for explanation purposes for you. So what we need to do to find out the capacity of the engine, we times that figure by the bore size, by the bore size, by the stroke, and then by the number of cylinders, okay? So, our bore is 83 mil, which is 8.3 centimeters. And the stroke of this particular engine, or the new crank that we're using, is 7.275 centimeters. So if we put that into that calculation, 0.7854 times the bore, which is, 8.3 then times the bore again then times the stroke which is 7.275 equals 39362 if we times that by 4 that gives us the overall cc's of this engine as it is bored out 1575 so it's gone from 1500 to 1575 okay if we divide that again by four, that gives us the cc of one cylinder, which is 393.62, okay? So that is the cc of one cylinder. Right, so what we do, we take this, we take this answer here and we put it into our compression ratio formula. So what we got, We've done that calculation, so one cylinder is, that's the whole engine, um, divide it by four gives us that. So this is just an example, it's giving you 500. So this is the calculation to find your compression ratio. So what we'll do is we put our 393.62 in there. So 393.62 plus 54, and the 54 in this example would be our 45.65 so plus 45.65 equals that is their the volume then what we do is we divide that by that volume again so divide that by 45.65 equals and that is our compression ratio so at the moment that engine is 9.6 to 1 okay 9.6 to 1 comp ratio. So guys, did you understand that? Not easy to explain, but I hope you did. So as you can see, um, to get that compression ratio there, what we need to do, obviously, is to make it a higher compression ratio, you need to make it less volume in the chamber. So we are guessing at the moment, just from our experience, 
to get up to about this number from 9.6 to 1, we are probably going to have to remove, if we keep that thickness of head gasket, we can come down, um, that head gasket there is probably about 45 thou, something like that. We can come down to a 27 thou head gasket, but that isn't get, going to get us anything like that. And we want a bit of room for manoeuvre. So if we keep the 1.2 head gasket, then to get up to that, we're going to have to remove about roughly two mil off that cylinder head to get that chamber down um, probably about 10 cc's if we took this down 10 cc's which is the chamber in the head and we do 29 plus 6.65 which is the gasket we've got 35.65 if we use that 35 35 0.65 if we put that into our formula um, the volume so we go so we go 393 62 plus what we've got now which is 35.65 35.65 divided by 35.65 equals 12 to 1 so that will give us 12 to 1 the reason we're not going to go 12 to 1, we don't quite want to go that far anyway. You have to equate for things like um, rod stretch, things like that. So we're, you know, 11 to 5, 11.5 will be, be ideal. So going by that, guys, maybe if we took a sort of to start with a mil and a half off that cylinder head, then redid it, um, we can always, you know, just take a little bit off and check the, the CCs on on the milling machine really but um, that's what it would give us if we took sort of roughly took about two mil off so yeah hope that makes sense guys I'm sorry if it doesn't but um, yeah just an explanation on compression ratios right guys so we've got a, a little interesting one just to finish off today's video this is a Coventry Climax block for Bob Dove and as you can see on the end here but basically this cover on the side of there he wasn't sure on the firstly the the surface of that mating face there was a bit rough and um and the same with this here so i've got a face on both it looks simple but in engineering terms it um you've got to think about the setup really so the way i've set this block up i've obviously got the the height gauge i've just got this as level as i can um using various jacks and what have you under there so first of all, we sort of get it level that way. And then obviously, once we've got our heights okay here, we sort of get it level the other way. So this is one of my Heath Robinson setups, as I normally say. This one's not too bad, because you've got two unions underneath, which I can hold in the vise. So we've managed to face that successfully. Um, and the face here, I'm just finishing off now. See there, we're removing as little, as, little of material as we can. Um, bear in mind this was just fairly level I've took off about five thou off that face there but the back edge as you'll see in a moment see the back edge there has not even cleaned so I think someone in the past looks like it looks like they've gone off gone over it with a bit of a sander or something and off the back edge it's just fell down um, and that is typical for using a sort of a flattened sander or something we see it a lot on block faces where people have clean the block face with a with a sander um, you know a flat sanding pad and what it does is it, it will it doesn't matter how flat it is but it will creep down any edge so if you put a straight edge on it will start you'll see it will creep over the back of the face of the block and into the bores and that's exactly what it looks like it's done here so um, we're gonna have to take a look what by the looks of it probably another five or so thou off that um, for that to clean but yeah don't use a sander guys so there we go guys, I've had to take about 10 thou off that in the end, but that is all nice and flat now, as is the cover, so hopefully we're going to get no more leaks there. Well thanks ever so much for watching today's video guys, I hope that explanation of the compression ratio made sense to you, um, if it didn't I'm sorry, um, but yeah, until Wednesday's video, have a great evening, we'll see you then, cheers guys. Mm -hmm.